I'm Oma Shadi, screenwriter, podcaster, author, etc. Go. <laughs> With everything life throws at us, I know sometimes it's a struggle to be positive. How I can't be positive all the time. And it's a struggle for me, and I try to be better about it. But really, what I want to do is take this time in the morning to help creatives and others feel empowered and positive. The danger zone. Now, I don't have to tell you that life can be complicated, but it doesn't have to feel messy. So really what I want to do with this is just give you my best advice to be a more empowered and positive you with no overcomplicated philosophical jargon or step-by-step -step process, just real-world practical advice you can implement in your day-to-day -day life. So I really want you to give yourself a chance to be emotionally and mentally happy for the day. So welcome to Mo in the Morning. Hey kids, Mo Mashadi. Look at us, volume 12, cooking along. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Uh, like I said yesterday, we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome all week um, and just different branches and different veins off of that. So I think that it's really important to um, just be kind to ourselves um, this week as any other week. But today I really wanted to touch on, and this might be where, um, and maybe it not, maybe it might not be, but um, it's really creator driven today. Um, because I had been chatting with a few folks from my writer's group um, regarding, obviously we have, we <laughs> commiserate um, with our imposter syndrome all, all the time and um, feeling that we're not qualified enough to get the things we get or have the opportunities that we have or worried that somebody's gonna, you know, kind of find us out, I guess um, that we're, you know, not as good as we seem. Um, and I think social media has a lot to do with it. And it's, you know, your follower count, obviously, you know, you're, you're awarded for that. Um, yeah. How, how much good content you have online, which is cool. And then it's a shame, you know, on the other hand. So, um, it's just food for thought with that. But, um, one of the things that I wanted to speak about today was about telling your personal story or um, having the guts to to kind of put it on paper. And I don't mean having the guts as to where you're a coward um, about even doing the act itself of, of writing it down, but I think that um, it can be scary to put your personal life onto paper. And I see it a lot with like songwriters and, and obviously um, as a songwriter myself, a singer songwriter myself, I, I've done that. You know, I've put and, uh, you know, put personal stories or personal experiences into song or onto paper. Um, but I think when you're writing a story and creating a piece, um, it's almost as if we hold back a little bit because as writers, obviously we try to fit our own experiences through our characters. I posed a question to my writer's group a while ago um, about, you know, what are you trying to resolve through your writing? Um, what resolution are you trying to get? What situation are you um, rehashing? And then what resolution are you working towards um, that you get to fix or you get to choose? You get to choose your own ending this time. And um, a lot of the feedback that I got was just saying, really don't feel like I'm trying to resolve anything, but what I'm trying to do is basically patch the wounds up. Um, I have a lot of stories that, I don't know if I'm trying to resolve them, but I guess just place the catharsis on it a little bit. Um, Stories about motherhood, stories about miscarriages, stories about um, broken heartedness, you know, abandonment, pain. Um, and I think that it's difficult for us to put it onto paper because then people inquire about it. Like you, you, like you hear it with songwriters and things like that. It's like, okay, well, who's this story about? Or who's this song about? And then people make their speculations. And it's almost where we want to be personable. We want to be personal. 
um, and put our own emotions in our own heart and our story, but it's a little guarded because then people are going to say, well, what's that about? What happened there? Um, and then the story becomes less of itself and more of a pointed um, endorsement of you, which is tough. Um, what I really wanted to say um, today, I guess, is on the branch of imposter syndrome, um, that other people's stories are better or more complete. Um, and it's knowing that we have the guts to tell our story the proper way and be unafraid of, we almost have to be unafraid of the critique to get that out. And those are a couple of projects that I've been working on that obviously worst case scenario, best case scenario, uh, stories about things that have gone on in my life. And I've actually written a few stories where, you know, you do get to change the ending on that. And, you know, it's obviously, you know, some childhood stuff and, 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 um, what, you, you know, you, you put those things to move your character forward, to propel your character forward, to get to a particular resolution. And I might be talking in circles today. I'm a little sleepy. Um, but really it's for me is, you know, having the strength to tell my own story the way I want to tell it. And I can't get to the ending and get to the judging and have that keep me from being truthful and being honest and being honest with myself and being honest with my characters and, and having that, I guess, having that catharsis and being okay with it. Um, so I hope it helped today a little bit, folks, is just, um, courage and, um, knowing that the judgment is, really just coming from you and the fear is coming from you the calls are coming from inside the house um so just take care of yourself today if you have a story that you want to get out that is a really personal uh piece continue with it and honestly write what it's going to be let the pain out we rewrite all the time and then we can shape it into what it needs to be but i think there's got to be some type of catharsis there that we're not afraid of and um, it's okay to be a little bit upset about things. And um, but unfortunately, as writers, we have to relive those kind of things. And, um, and I don't mean say suffer for the sake of your story. And I know a lot of creatives do that. They, have, they need a, a particular muse. And a lot of people use pain as a muse. It can't be a good story. Um, if it had a happy ending or it can't be a good, um, you know, it can't be a, a love affair if there's a, you know, a happy ending to it. Um, a lot of people use anger and sadness and fear to kind of propel their writing forward. Um, which is great. If that's your steez and that's where you're at, then more power to you. Um, but accept it for what it is. It's a catharsis and let it go. And, um, don't be afraid to tell, your pain, I guess, a little bit. Um, it doesn't make you uh, pitiful. It doesn't make you any less human or any less um, strong. But I think that's something that for me that I need to be cognizant of and that I'm kind of struggling with is to not just write what I think people want to hear and write safely. So... Be good to yourself. Let the catharsis out. If you have to write your pain, then write your pain. But I want you to know that there's an incredible amount of bravery in that. And I think writing through that and getting that down and sharing that with others is legitimately the bravest thing we can do for ourselves. Um, so I hope it helped a little bit for you guys today. A little melancholy today. I apologize. Um... But I just wanted to share that with you today, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, folks.